Hello everyone, Satnam. In today's video, I'm going to be giving you five ways that you can overcome fear and anxiety by healing your root chakra. This is the second video in a series designed to help you build awareness of your body, your mind, and your spirit through this chakra system. Are you ready? Let's begin. First, let's quickly review what are chakras. Chakras are wheels of energies that are intersection points between our physical reality and our mind and our spirit. It is the point at which spirit comes through into the physical. So we can use chakras as a diagnostic tool as these physical manifestations can indicate stagnant or overactive energies in these specific chakras. The root chakra is also known as the Muladhara chakra. It is also known as the base chakra. So whenever we begin to work on our chakras, we begin right here, our foundation. It is important for us to grow a strong foundation so that we are grounded and well prepared to move through the rest of the chakras. This foundation is the building block that the other chakras rest above. So we must solidify this ground so it can stabilize us and support the rest of our growth. The root chakra is associated with earth. It is the densest of our manifest experience. Essentially, it is the basis of all life. It is associated with our basic survival instincts. It is the area of our safety and security, the area of our fight or flight response. When we are grounded and rooted, this means that our root chakra is balanced. We are one with life, in the flow, and we feel secure. On the other side of the coin, we can diagnose a root chakra imbalance through how we feel and how we act. When the root chakra is overactive, this may manifest as a need to hoard a bunch of stuff, overeating, or an obsessive need for money or sex. Physically, this may manifest as weight problems or sciatica pain. When it's underactive, this is where anxiety and insecurity can appear. Physically, this may manifest as constipation or knee problems. Fear is the first and the biggest indicator that our root chakra needs some attention. And fear is present whether the chakra is underactive or overactive. So when signs of fear begin to show, the first thing we need to do is ground ourselves. When we are grounded, we are in the natural flow of life. So it's a good idea to take a pause and to step away from the screen, from the internet, and to go into nature. You can do this by either taking a walk in nature, or if that's not available to you, do some gardening, whether that's in your backyard or get some indoor plants. I recommend don't listen to any music, even if it's calming music. In that way, you allow yourself to be fully present in the moment. Allow yourself to listen and to see the world around you. What do you hear? What do you see? Can you notice the bee floating by? Maybe there are some birds in the trees. How does the soil smell like? Can you feel the breeze of the wind as it floats past you? Allow yourself to come back to a place of discovery, like you were a child again. It's that place of awe of the world, of life, and the curiosity even if it's only for five minutes. Doing this will help you ground and get back into that flow around you. It is a reminder that you are a part of this flow. This natural state is 
your natural state. And what if you're in an anxious state? This is one that I'm very familiar with. For a good portion of my life, I had constant anxiety. And it's something I didn't even realize until it actually went away and subsided. For me, it manifested as a constant pit in my stomach, which made it uncomfortable to eat and to be out in public with people around me. What helped me, of course, was my yoga and meditation practice, in particular, breathing exercises. These breathing exercises were key, especially when I would have panic attacks. A simple breath work that you can do to calm down is called long, deep breathing. You do this by extending your inhales and lengthening out your exhales. Do this through your nose. If you find that your shoulders or your chest is expanding as you inhale, try placing your hand on top of your belly in order to really feel your belly expand as you inhale and to feel your navel point go in towards your spine on your exhale. This type of breathing is pretty low key, so you can do this anytime, anywhere. I do have a video where I walk you through a grounding breathwork exercise, and I'll link that down below in the description box so you can check it out after this video. When I would get panic attacks, what would help me is to take a deep breath and then hold my breath for as long as possible. Please note that everyone's different, everyone's panic attacks looks very different. So this may not work for you. So personally, when I am in that state, I have trouble controlling my breath. I begin hyperventilating. So the only way that I was able to gain control of my breath again was to hold it for as long as possible. Even long, deep breathing wasn't very helpful when I'm already in that heightened state. When I'm out in public, I tend to get dizzy spells and a shortness of breath. I found bringing a grounding stone with me helps me come back into my body and into a calm state. Personally, I like black tourmaline, but any garden stone could work. So here, as you grip the stone, you are programming your mind to feel this physical sensation of squeezing the stone and the signal allows you to tell your body to relax. Of course, this is something that has to come with time. As you continue to do that physical movement, create that physical signal, you have to make that conscious effort to calm down and come back into your body. And that's when you can either do a mental exercise to come back in or do some breath work. And essentially, you are pavloving yourself to produce a specific effect in the body. So you really don't need to believe in the healing powers of crystals for this to work. My next tip is actually trademarked by Salima, and that's to squeeze your anus. <laughs> I'm serious. Squeeze your anus. This is known as Mulbanda or root lock in our Kundalini yoga practice. We typically do root lock at the end of an exercise in order to seal the energy that we just generated and to stabilize our senses. But you can do this exercise any moment that you are in a stressful situation because it will allow you to restabilize and to focus. This is the secret of us yogi entrepreneurs and how we're able to stay calm and collected in times of stress. Trust me, just try it. Trust me, trust me. <laughs> and finally, you can use sound to ground. If you have access to an instrument that can make the note of C, like this crystal bowl, you can use the sound vibration to ground yourself. Now
Now, I'm not a music major, but the seven chakras can also be represented by the C major scale. You might be familiar with it. It sounds like this. You can think of the first note of the scale of being the root. As we move up the scale, we increase the frequency, wavelength gets smaller, meaning the pitch gets higher. This is how the seven chakras also work as we ascend. The root chakra, similar to the root of a scale, is the lowest frequency, the lowest in pitch. Or you can also chant using the Bij or Seed Mantra, Lam. As we chant Lam, we are creating a supportive block to protect our energy from descending downwards past our foundation. Bonus points if you can chant Lam in the note of C. Lam. We can use this sound in meditation in order for us to focus at the root chakra, to focus our energy for healing and strengthening. I recommend doing this meditation for 40 days for at least 5 minutes per day in order to build a strong foundation to support the rest of our physical healing and our spiritual growth. Satnam, thank you so much for tuning in everyone. If you found this video useful, please consider subscribing to my channel for more content like this. Working on the chakras is definitely not a one and done. It's a practice. I do these practices myself whenever I start to feel myself go into an anxious state. And anxiety itself isn't inherently bad. To me, anxiety has become almost like a superpower. It is my compass to show me that something in my life has to shift. I know it may sound crazy if you are in that same place that I was with that constant pitted feeling. But as you build your foundation, your ability to handle stress and adversity will become so powerful. That is my promise to you if you keep up your spiritual practice. So Satnam, thank you again for tuning in. My name is Nori, and until next time, I will see you again soon.